Hey, it's Chris. Today we're checking out the 2022 iPhone SE. Now this thing starts at $429, which is 370 less than the iPhone 13. Not the iPhone mini, but the regular 13. So as I get this unboxed, I got a story for you. One time I was at Qdoba waiting to get my burrito and there was a cop in line in front of me and I was like, hey, that's a really cool car out front. How fast does that thing go? And you know what he said? He looked at me, he's kind of grumpy and he said, fast enough. Well, this thing, the iPhone SE, may look kind of old, but guess what? It's also fast enough. And as you get a peek inside the box here, remember what you're seeing because we're gonna talk about battery and charging later on, and you'll notice there's no charging brick here. Now, as this fires up, let me just say, wow, this is small. It's been a while since I had an iPhone in my hand that was this small, but there's people that are gonna like this, and I like it too. These days I tend to like something more minimal. If I can get away with something smaller with as much power as I can, that's something that appeals to me. Now feast your eyes on this because look, the big story here is the price to performance. For the money, you're not gonna find something better. Why is that? Well look, this thing has the same inside, the same guts as the iPhone 13. It's just in an older body and has a few less bells and whistles. And you know what else? You'll also get access to years and years of software updates. So crazy performance and software updates for a really long time all in a budget-friendly package. And guess what? I haven't even talked about the design yet because that matters less. If you're shopping for this, yes, it has an older design. It's got the big forehead, got the old home button with the touch ID. And yeah, I'm scanning my fingerprint in right here. Some people really like that. Some people would prefer face ID. And actually, if you really like it, this might be your last time to get it because I don't think this particular phone design is gonna roll around again ever. And you know what? I think a lot of tech reviewers are gonna say, I don't like this button, I don't like Touch ID, it's not the new thing. But honestly, that's a selling point. Some people just like the old way of doing things. They don't want Face ID. So as I'm covering this thing in my fingerprints, yeah, it attracts fingerprints pretty good. You can notice this design has been around since 2017. So if you wanna be nice, you could call it a classic or maybe timeless <laughs> with the big forehead, you know? And yeah, it's got that rounded design. It's not the flat edges, but again, it's just down to what your personal preference is. Some people really like this. Oh, here's something. You know, if you like the vibe of this video, you might as well go ahead and hit subscribe because there's lots of great Apple content hitting this channel all the time. And I'm also gonna do a follow-up review after I spend some time with this, really dig into the details. If you don't wanna miss that, get yourself subscribed. Now, honestly, I gotta tell you, I'm not minding this. The design, you know, it's a solid, good, just a high quality build. It's an iPhone, you know, it's just cheaper, but it's really high quality. And absolutely, there's something to having a smaller size phone. Some people really like that. Now, I got some more honesty for you. Honestly, this screen size does feel cramped. And that's coming from somebody who chose the iPhone 13 Pro, not the Max, just the smaller Pro, because I wanted a smaller, more compact thing that I could take with me. I mean, look, just look at the difference in the screen sizes with the rather small 13 Pro and the iPhone SE. Now, I got the brightness set to 50% on each of these, so here's what the differences look like between the budget and the flagship options. Just looking at the SE's actual website on the SE, you can just see, you know, you don't get quite as much content fitting into the page maybe as you would with a larger phone. And you know, as an iPhone 13 user, I certainly can notice that the screen doesn't look quite as nice as my iPhone 13. But how do I phrase this? You know, it's not that this looks bad, it's just a little less punchy than the flagship phone. So this is a 4.7 inch design overall. But the thing is, even though it might feel kind of cramped just right out of the box, whatever phone size I end up getting year over year, you get used to it, you adapt in like a couple of weeks, right? And then it doesn't seem weird anymore, whether it's bigger than you used to, smaller. And so yeah, that's gonna be the exact same here as well. Now, one thing you don't get on the back here is MagSafe. I've come to really like MagSafe, especially when it comes to charging accessories for my iPhone 13. Is it the end of the world if you don't get it here? No, but it's a nice to have that you're gonna miss out on. Which brings me back to the box here. Inside the box here, there's no charging brick. Why does that matter? Well, Apple's trying to be more eco-friendly. Here's the thing. If you're upgrading from an older iPhone, you probably have the five watt brick, right? And if you use that here, this thing's actually capable of fast charging with 20 watts, but you're gonna have to go out and buy it. And I'm guessing a lot of people are gonna end up not fast charging here 
if they just have an old brick laying around. All right, back to the screen here. Now look, this thing is passable in terms of brightness, but one thing I already know based on the rating is that I'm probably not going to enjoy it as much outdoors in the bright sunlight as I would a flagship iPhone. Indoors, this thing's gonna be a joy to use. You're really gonna like it. Let's talk about this camera though. This is one awesome camera in the back. You're gonna be able to take amazing photos and videos with this rear camera. All right, here's what the rear looks like with that single camera on the SE. And then here you got the iPhone 13 Pro with its rear pro camera system, three cameras. Which means, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit limiting in terms of flexibility. You're gonna have to zoom with your feet, you know, get closer to something physically, for instance. But that's all right. If you're actually trying to save some money, the quality and the things that you can do with this are pretty mind blowing, honestly, for the price. So here's a camera test, just so you can see how this looks, what it sounds like. This is the rear camera on the new iPhone SE. And you know what? It's pretty impressive, isn't it? For sure, very usable if you got a small business or if you're a student and you need to shoot some promo material or like a class project, really, I mean, you can't go wrong here. All right, so now I flipped it around. I'm giving you a sample of the video shot on the selfie camera. Now, it's not quite as good as the back camera, that's for sure. Now, speaking of the camera, one thing you're not gonna get for this price point is night mode for photos. That's definitely not something that everybody uses every day, but when that one time comes up and you're like, man, I really need to nail this photo, then you don't have it. That said, there are some cool apps that basically give you that same kind of functionality, that night mode, even if you don't have it. So I'll link that up in the description. Ring, ring, who is it? 5G, wow, 5G on an iPhone SE. 5G in an affordable phone, that's pretty cool. The one nitpick would be, it's not millimeter wave 5G, but honestly, are most people gonna notice no. In the battery department, this classic phone is going to be pretty good. If you're a power user, you might find that it's not quite as good as you would like. Definitely one of the areas where it falls behind what you get with the flagships. So if you're doing a lot of gaming, for instance, really recording a lot of video or something during the day, then that's another instance where it's nice to have MagSafe where you can just pop on some extra power. And here, you gotta carry around an external battery and connect it you know, with the cable, it's not quite as good. So just based on the battery size, you know, that might be one of the weaknesses, if you can call it that, because again, for the price, who really can complain? Now here's something I know to be fact. A lot of people who end up using this are gonna say to themselves, what's the point even of a flagship phone? Because honestly, I can get so much done here. Yeah, it's not the latest, greatest design, but it's what's under the hood, so to speak, that just makes this thing a powerful, powerful beast. Now, a while back, I actually made a video that was really comprehensive, showing both sides of the debate, talking about iPhone versus Android and why you might actually prefer one over the other, not just the regular old talking points. I'm gonna link it up down below. If you're on the fence, if you need some help moving in one direction over the other. But here's the thing, this thing buys you admission to the Apple ecosystem at the most affordable price. So AirPods, iPads, the Mac, Apple TV, the list goes on and on and on. This is a great gateway drug if you want to get into Apple's ecosystem. Now, I'm gonna say something about this that I've said many times before in the past about budget devices. If you gave me nothing but budget Apple devices, the budget iPad, the budget iPhone, et cetera, okay, I would go out and crush it in terms of creating great content, doing my job and doing it really well, like with incredible standards and I can make people's jaws drop with the content that I would create with all the budget Apple stuff. That's because this stuff is so capable. It's really not about the design, the outer shell, right? It's what can you do with it? I'm telling you, I could do a lot with this. This is honestly a weapon of mass creation you saw that wallpaper uh, from my desk setup a while back. I should really turn that into some merch or something, right? Copyright. It's like that cop said, fast enough. Now, I don't know if he thought I was trying to figure out if I could outrun him or something, if I needed to, but the point being for our purposes here today, these two things, though they're in different shells, have basically the same engine inside. If we can talk practically about this and look past its design, which yes, is dated, you get iOS here, the latest version of iOS with all the bells and whistles, same as over here on the Pro. 
Andy Minio is gonna sound the same no matter which phone you're playing it out of into your AirPods, right? So this was the unboxing. I'm gonna end up doing an actual review of this soon and maybe compare it to the flagship iPhone. See if you can even tell the difference from some of the photos and stuff. So drop me some comments. Let me know what you want me to test specifically. Give me apps, give me scenarios, and I'll make sure that that happens for you guys in the coming weeks as I spend some time with this. And you know something I'm gonna do? I'm gonna link up one of my favorite cases for you guys down in the description as well, along with a video where I talk about what I love about that particular case. Make sure to check out the iPad Air video that I just published as well. Got my hands on the new blue iPad Air. It looks so good. And you know, you're gonna wanna check that out too. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.